Welcome. Let's review the history of the Child Support Program. Child Support Program is federally funded Part D as in David. Also, we will reveal the secret of the Child Support Program. And oh, by the way, fathers are not happy about it. In order to satisfy the program, which is Title IV-D, the purpose is to separate children from their fathers, which is called the Abandonment Clause. Every state put in their legislation the Abandonment Clause. Can you locate it for your state? Go ahead, locate it for your state. We have a video called Child Support and Custody. Review this uh, information. Hello, my name is Chris, and in this session, we will review the history of the Title IV-D program. Let's get started. All this is possible based on donation. We will welcome any amount donation. We appreciate it. We have an app for that. Childsupport.newzendler.com Child Support Enforcement The Child Support Enforcement Program, known as the CSE, was enacted in 1975 as a federal state program, Title IV of the Social Security Act. The primary purpose of this program was to reduce public expenditures for recipients of cash assistance by obtaining ongoing support from non-custodial parents that could be used to reimburse the state and federal governments for part of that assistance. This purpose often is referred to as public assistance cost recovery. Title IV-D, a federally funded program, it is a contract. Repeat, it is a contract. Then let's look at the following contracts. This is Texas, and here is the secret. One of the secrets, the Office of the Attorney General. Right there, the Office of the Attorney General manages the child support program, not the governor. The Attorney General manages the program. Here we are now at the Income Withholding Enforcement. Let's start at the beginning. How did this got started? So in 1975, Congress amended the Title IV, which is IV Roman numerals, of the Social Security Act to include what is called Enforcement Program. This is called the New Part D to authorize the federal funding for the purposes of enforcing the collections of child support and that is found under 42 U.S.C. 651 of the Social Security Act. So Title IV, Roman numeral IV, dash, New Part D. In 1984, for the first time, income withholding became part of the IVD state requirement plan. They created another section called 466, where it was referred to as the mandatory income withholding enforcement procedure for each state. And they updated that section into 454 4, of the Social Security Act under what is called 42 USC 666. Again, in 1988, they introduced what is called the immediate income withholding into the family laws of the state. Now, with this provision, they said whether or not you owe arrears, you will be placed in the income withholding process, and it would be immediate. 
1996, Congress revisited the program one more time, and they added what is called the Federal Parent Locator Service. What that is, is a database. And what happens is your employer will enter your personal information into their database. And it's found under Section 454A as part of the 42 USC 654B provision. They also added a few more things. They added that administrative orders can be used for the income withholding. They also require that it's an automated process, which is it's done by computers. So the Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement now has a responsibility to provide oversight and technical assistance to the state and their local IDV programs. They implemented that through a process called the TEMPO, that's T-E-P-M-P-O process. We won't go into what the TEMPO is, but one of the key features of the TEMPO program is that attorneys can now issue administrative orders. So think about that. Congress updated the program since 1975 to now give the power to attorneys to issue orders. The single and separate unit under 45 CFR 301. So the Office of Child Support, the Federal Office of Child Support, created what is called a, a group or agency within the Department of Health. That is where it's being administered from. They also created a one state remedy, means that the state that has jurisdiction of the child support case can leverage or utilize that jurisdiction in all 50 states, sort of a one state solution. So when you're summons to court, whether for the first time, you get a summons that says, show up or appear in family court. Well, there's a question here in terms of constitutionality. Congress created the Office of Child Support. That's Article 1. Family court is a division of Article 3. The separation clause of our Constitution says no agency has control of the, of the other. So on the screen, you'll see we have this question mark. How are they able to accomplish this, this work and through the program? Well, what if there is an agreement between the two branches of government? And that agreement is called the IDV agreement or the cooperative arrangements. That's 45 CFR 302.34. This is where the IDV program now creates IDV agencies. And they're now mandated to enter into written agreements, contracts with officials from the court system, as well as the law enforcement and the prison system. Also, they agree to manage the state IVA program, which is welfare, under 45 CFR 235.70. So now this completes the circle. So this, the Office of Child Support creates the cooperative arrangements which allow them access to the court system through the contracts, and it's managed by the Department of Health. That completes the circle. So where does that leave your constitutionality? When you arrive at court for a hearing and you're in a room with someone in a black robe, at that point, the first statement is, where are you? Are you in Article 1 or Article 3? That question must be answered because, again, it's the separation of powers. So if you're before an IDV agent, which is a judge that's contracted, by the IDV, then that judge or, or lawyer or whatever that person is, they're not performing a judicial function. If you disagree with our assessment, please feel free to comment below. Upon further research, we found a case called Blessing versus Freestone. That is, the Supreme Court came back and said, the Title IV-D process or program does not benefit the mother, the child, or anyone. It's basically a federal funding program, and therefore the individual has no rights. It went on further that the IDV 
uh, process was set up so that the depart the secretary of the state can manage it, the program through the Department of Health or Human Services, that they manage it through your local IDV office, which is functioning inside the court system. Again, that's blessing versus freestone. If you have any comments or question, you can reach us at Chris H at 289 at protonmail.com. Please subscribe and ring the notification bell, as well as the Title IV D program is managed by the Attorney General Office, not by the governor. Also, the video the video is free as we accept donation. This is all possible based on your donation. Please give freely. Thank you.